Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Ah, oh, blessings, everyone. This is Dale. Hey, I really didn't mean to leave you hanging in the last episode and tease you like that. Uh, I know they do that to you all the time on radio, right? They do it to you all the time on TV, and it gets sort of irritating after a while. But I did just run out of time. And so what we're looking at is we're looking at that 70th week of Daniel, that last seven-year time period. And I know that you are bearing with the repetition because you know that repetition is the way that we learn things, that we understand things, that we start to comprehend things. And this is not repetition of man's structure or man's organization. This is just simply what the Word of God says. So again, we have seen that there's going to be a seven-year time period that is yet to come. The 70th week of Daniel. At the beginning of that, someone is going to sign a peace covenant or affirm that peace covenant. And this someone is the man of lawlessness, okay? It's the Antichrist. More than likely, he will not look like the Antichrist at that time. He's going to look great. He's going to look wonderful. But it actually is uh, uh, things that are happening on earth are happening in heaven. It's the opening of the first seal that uh, seals up a document with Jesus popping open these seals. So the first three seals happen at what we call the beginning of birth pangs. That's what Jesus called them. Uh, the false Christ of the first seal, the uh, wars of the second seal, the famine of the third seal. Halfway through that seven-year time period, the man of lawlessness stops the sacrifices that the Jews are doing and declares himself to be God. I think he literally walks into the Holy of Holy of the temples or the Mosaic tabernacle that the Jews will have and declares himself to be God. He then starts to attack the Jewish people in Israel and the body of Christ, the true church. This goes on for some period of time, less than three years and one month, okay? Somewhere during the, during the last three and a half years of this seven-year time period, with the opening of the fourth seal, fifth seal, then the sixth seal, the sun, moon, and stars go dark, and the church is raptured, and the Lord Jesus Christ is revealed. At that point in time, he opens the seventh seal, and the seven trumpets blow. The seven trumpets come up to the end of the seven-year time period. And then we read a passage out of Daniel 12 that's really important for our understanding of this. So let me reiterate this. Uh, beginning with verse uh, 8, Daniel asked a question of the angel. As for me, I heard but could not understand. So I said, my Lord, what would be the outcome of these things? He said, go your way, Daniel. For these words are concealed and sealed up until the end time. And as I said before, I think that we are in that end time because there's so much understanding and enlightenment and illumination coming from the book of Daniel now, which really had not been uh, done up the last 50, 100 years. Verse 10 of Daniel 12, many will be purged, purified and refined, but the wicked will act wickedly and none of the wicked will understand. But those who have insight will understand. I think that those who have insight are those who are true believers, those that are empowered by the Holy Spirit. The Lord will give us insight if we will seek Him. If we abide in Him, if we abide in His Word, if we abide in His Spirit, He will give us understanding. Now, verse 11. From the time that the regular sacrifice is abolished and the abomination of desolation is set up, Daniel has spoken of that in Daniel 9. Jesus speaks of it in Matthew 24, 15. From the time that the abomination of the desolation is set up, there will be 1,290 days. Now, the reason that's interesting is we know that that abomination is set up halfway through the seven-year time period. From the moment that is set up until the end of the seven-year time period is 1,260 days. But here he says there will be 1,290 days. So why the difference? Well, obviously, there's an extra 30 days. There is an extra 30 days at the end of the seven-year time period. But, as they say on TV, wait, there's more. Verse 12, how blessed is he who keeps waiting and attains to the 1,335th day. <coughs> so not only is there an extra 30 days, there's an extra 45 days at the end of that. So let me just tell you what I think happens here. Okay? At the end of that seven-year time period, uh, the seventh trumpet is blown. Salvation of the Lord for Israel has come. The mystery of salvation of God is completed. 
his final wrath is then poured out. During the 30 days, during that extra 30 days, is when we see the bowls in Revelation poured out. And we'll look at those in, in the next few episodes. We'll look at the trumpets and look at the bowls, okay? But during that 30-day time period, the bowls will be poured out. And it's not at the beginning of the 30 days. It probably starts about the fifth or sixth day. And there's reasons for thinking that, which we'll get into some detail as we go along, okay? But the final bowls of the wrath of God is poured out. And at the end of that is, what, is the battle that we call Armageddon. Then you have an extra 45 days. Those 45 days are for restoring the kingdom. So in one sense, the 30 days prior to that were the bowls. Some people have described it as being the reclamation of the kingdom. Okay, The 45 days is the restoration of the kingdom. And people say, well, why would the kingdom need to be restored? <laughs> have you seen what happens with the bowls? Have you seen what God does when he pours forth his wrath upon the earth in the day of the Lord's wrath? And so he spends 45 days, uh, for lack of a better term, I'm going to say, rebuilding everything. Okay, It's also during this 45 days that the sheep and goat judgment takes place. Remember that out of Matthew uh, 25? We just looked at it three or four episodes ago where Jesus is going to call those forth from the nation. And the ones on the right, he'll put the sheep on the right and the goats on the left. And the sheep on the right, he looks at them and he says, Hey, enter into the kingdom plan for you since before the foundations of the earth because you helped my brothers. To the goats on the left, he says, enter into the fire that's been prepared for you because you did not help my brother. So at the end of the seven-year period of the 70th week of Daniel, the mystery of God is completed. The salvation of Israel is completed. The salvation of mankind, uh, which is sort of interesting, except for that sheep and goat thing. Then you have a 30-day reclamation period. Then you have a 45-day reclamation period. And then from what we see in the Scripture, apparently uh, we move into uh, the Lord's ruling and reigning for a thousand years, what you see in Revelation 20, the first few verses of that. You have uh, a new Jerusalem. You have a new heaven. You have a new earth. Now, I, again, I know this is a lot of stuff to be just having spoken into your mind, but take this before the Lord and watch what he says. Ask him questions. He'll give you insight. The timeline that I'm giving you right now, a lot of times people want to say, well, are you pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib? We want to label things, right? You're always wanting to label things. Mankind wants to do that. And I understand because it does help with some things. This is actually referred to as the pre-wrath, okay, pre-wrath timeline. In other words, the promise that we will be raptured as the body of Christ before the wrath of God is poured out. And some people say, well, this is just like a <coughs> mid-trib or this. No, 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 you can't say it like that. When you try to align something and say, well, it's just like this other plan this man came up with. No, 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 that's not the way you look at it. You just look to see what the scripture says. It says that we will be taken away and snatched up prior to the wrath of God, pre-wrath. That's what it means. And when you see this, when you see how the Lord is going to pour forth his wrath with the trumpets and the bows, how he's going to reclaim his kingdom, how he's literally going to restore and rebuild the kingdom, how he's going to rule over that kingdom for a thousand years, how he's going to release Satan at the end of the thousand years, and Satan will deceive the nations. The nations will come against uh, Jerusalem, and literally the Lord will just breathe upon them and annihilate them. Interesting stuff, amazing stuff. It really shows the power and the wonder and the glory of God. It really draws some things to question, just real quick. When you, when you know this, when you see this, all of a sudden you start thinking, Lord, why am I worried? Why is there any anxiety? Why do I fret of, over anything? Because God, you knew all this and before the foundations of the earth. If you are this powerful, and he is, no limit to his powerful, then there's no reason that I should ever worry or fret over anything, right? Well, again, I'm Dale, and I thank you so much for being with me. I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.